Growing up in front of the spotlight is extremely difficult. Just like, I don't honestly, know. can't do this anymore. Kardashian Jenner empire, once a dominant force in social media and celebrity culture, appears to be experiencing a significant decline. Previously, they were at the pinnacle of TV and social media influence, but their popularity has waned in recent years. Their follower counts and TV ratings are dropping, and audiences seem to be growing weary of their show and social media content. People are now seeking more authentic and relatable material, moving away from the Kardashians' well-known displays of wealth and glamour. Oh, damn, the Snoop Boots! Ooh! Hey, yo, the Snoop Boots are fire! Despite remaining wealthy and famous, the Kardashians are facing significant criticism. Their businesses and products are under scrutiny, and they're dealing with backlash related to questionable practices and legal issues. The media now tends to spotlight their fall from grace, focusing more on their controversies and mistakes rather than their achievements. Even when they launch new projects or seasons of their show, the attention often shifts to their errors and problematic behavior. A major concern is the family's privilege, particularly regarding their rise to fame. The original Kardashians gained some recognition and wealth through connections and Robert Kardashian's involvement in the O.J. Simpson trial, but the younger generation has leveraged their family name and resources even more to their advantage. It stopped until I was 24 that I was like, okay, I think I need to like take it back a notch, which we could also get into because that's a very yeah. kind of dramatic. Doll and Kylie Jenner in particular have faced criticism for appearing oblivious to their advantages. Kendall, for example, has claimed that her success is solely due to hard work, despite the clear benefits provided by her family connections. This discrepancy between their perceived effort and their actual advantages has sparked significant public criticism. The Kardashians have also been criticized for using their children in ways many view as exploitative. A notable example is Northwest, the daughter of Kim Kardashian, and Kanye West who was given a role in the Lion King performance at the Hollywood Bowl. Critics argued that Northwest's role was more a result of her parents' fame and their connections with Disney than her own talent. Many felt that other children, who had trained for years and deserved the opportunity, Additionally, the Kardashian-Jenner family's business strategy is often criticized as a way to make quick money rather than genuine entrepreneurship. They have launched numerous businesses and products, from makeup lines and clothing to teeth whitening products and supplements. However, many of these ventures seem to have short lifespans, with the Kardashians frequently introducing new products or brands designed to capitalize on fleeting trends or exaggerated insecurities, especially among women. Kylie Jenner's journey with Kylie Cosmetics is a compelling case study in celebrity entrepreneurship, marked by highs, lows, and controversies. When Kylie launched Kylie Cosmetics in late 2015, it seemed like a marketing triumph. Her lip kits, which included a lip pencil and gloss, sold out almost instantly, thanks to a massive social media campaign and the buzz around Kylie's newly plumped lips. However, this buzz was partly manufactured through misleading claims that her fuller lips were achieved solely with makeup, when in reality, they were the result of cosmetic enhancements. Using their vast resources and connections, the Jenners created a whirlwind of excitement around Kylie Cosmetics, turning a limited stock of just 15,000 lip kits into a sensation and selling them out within minutes. This initial success set the stage for what seemed like a booming business. However, this early triumph was largely due to strategic hype rather than the actual quality or innovation of the products. I love the precision of a pencil. This skin one is $22. And the Kylie one is 16 so like... I just, I'm having a hard time seeing why it's sick. Kylie Cosmetics initially thrived on the celebrity allure that often fuels success in the fashion and beauty industry. However, over time, the brand struggled to sustain its initial excitement. While the lip kits were groundbreaking at first, later products started to lose their uniqueness, often resembling items from other brands like ColourPop but with higher price tags. As a result, Kylie's products began to lose their appeal, leading to a decline in the brand's popularity.
Okay, so uh, this is the ColourPop one. This is the Kylie Jenner one. And honestly, if I had to like compare them, they're not fully dried yet. But I would say that the ColourPop one might be a little bit darker, a little bit more. Kylie's difficulties with Kylie Cosmetics go beyond just product quality. They reflect larger issues. For instance, there were allegations that Kylie and the Jenners missled Forbes about the company's success, even presenting fake documents to inflate Kylie's net worth to billionaire status. This inflated narrative, while enhancing Kylie's image, undermined the credibility of her success and overshadowed true makeup innovators like Pat McGrath, who have made significant contributions. Another challenge contributing to Kylie's current struggles is her extravagant lifestyle, which includes multiple mansions, a private jet, and a team of staff to manage her daily needs. The costs associated with such opulence are staggering, and despite selling a significant portion of Kylie Cosmetics to Cody for hundreds of millions of dollars, it's clear that maintaining her lifestyle requires a steady flow of income. To meet her financial needs, Kylie has adopted a strategy of frequently releasing new products, even if their quality is questionable. This approach aims to leverage her celebrity status for quick sales, but often fails to build long-term customer loyalty. Essentially, the strategy resembles throwing everything at the wall to see what sticks, prioritizing immediate revenue over sustained product quality. The reason why I sold half my company was to have this big infrastructure to go global. Kylie and other members of the Kardashian-Jenner family have faced criticism for their involvement in questionable sponsorships and promotions. They often endorse products or services, including gambling and other potentially harmful ventures, in pursuit of quick financial gains. Critics argue that this approach prioritizes profit over ethics, revealing a lack of responsibility in their endorsement choices. The Kardashians' approach to fame and business frequently appears to focus on maintaining their lavish lifestyles and public personas at any cost. While they undoubtedly benefit from their celebrity status, the relentless push for new products and endorsements highlights a deeper issue. The need to sustain a high-profile lifestyle rather than focusing on genuine innovation or quality. Although they have built a significant business empire, it has not been without controversy. A prime example is Kourtney Kardashian's supplement line Lem. Despite its popularity, closer scrutiny suggests it may be more about clever marketing than delivering real value. Lemmy products, particularly their gummy supplements, face criticism for several reasons. Gummies as a delivery system for supplements are not ideal. They often contain high amounts of sugar to make them palatable, which compromises their effectiveness. Each Lemmy gummy, for instance, contains about 3 grams of sugar, a notable amount given that the average daily sugar intake recommendation is around 25 grams. Additionally, gummies generally lack the precise dosage control found in pills or capsules, and they tend to lose potency faster, leading to inconsistent results. Many gummy supplements also fall short in providing therapeutic doses, which are typically higher than what is found in gummy form. Despite these issues, Lemmy's marketing strategy is impressive, leveraging Kourtney Kardashian's fame to create a sleek, visually striking brand image. However, this marketing gloss may overshadow the actual quality of the products. While Lemmy products are often priced at a premium, they may not always deliver the benefits they claim. Opinion Courtney is not really valuing perspectives of the medical professionals because if so, she would go after advertising in a different way. One concerning issue with Lemmy supplements is the use of proprietary blends. These blends allow manufacturers to keep the exact amounts of each ingredient secret, meaning you could be paying a premium for a product where the key active ingredients might be present in very small quantities. For example, Lemmy Sleep Gummy includes melatonin, known for its sleep benefits, but you can find the same melatonin at a much lower cost from other brands. Another controversial product is Lemmy's Liper Gummy, which targets vaginal health with claims of improving both health and taste. It contains pineapple, vitamin C, and a probiotic called SNC 1969. However, there is no evidence supporting these claims. Pineapple's supposed effects are based on myths, vitamin C needs to be applied topically to be effective, and there is no research supporting the benefits of SNZ 1969. Critics argue that Lemmy's products exploit insecurities, particularly with the Liper Gummy, which appears to address concerns about vaginal health that many women don't need to worry about. 
The high price for a product that essentially contains a few grams of sugar and minimal effective ingredients seems unjustified. One Reddit user commented, Lemmy is nothing but snake oil. I use Ollie and trust their products. I've seen results like not bloating with Ollie. They're a trusted brand. Another user said, Gummy vitamins are almost always a waste of money. To make something a gummy, you need a lot of binder, filler, flavor, and often sugar, which leaves little room for actual vitamins. Plus, synthetic vitamins are generally not easily absorbed by the body, so you need a lot to make a difference. Overall, it seems that the Kardashians are not only setting up their daughters to follow in their footsteps, but are also crafting a brand that capitalizes on women's insecurities. Their business model appears to focus on flashy, short-lived ventures designed to exploit these insecurities for quick financial gains. To me, as someone who used to take 30 supplements a day, I love the idea of taking a gummy, and I just want this brand to be just something that you look forward to taking. They're just so... These blends allow manufacturers to keep the exact amounts of each ingredient secret, meaning you could be paying a premium for a product where the key active ingredients might be present in very small quantities. For example, Lemmy's Sleep Gummy includes melatonin, known for its sleep benefits, but you can find the same melatonin at a much lower cost from other brands. Daughters are prominently featured, while the sons are largely overlooked. This strategy seems to promote inexpensive products that leverage the Kardashian name rather than focusing on quality. Is this constant cycle of flashy but short-lived ventures the future of celebrity-driven businesses, or is there a more sustainable model out there? Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video and want to stay updated on the latest celebrity news and dramatic revelations, make sure to hit the like button and subscribe to our channel. Don't forget to turn on the notification bell so you never miss an update. Until next time, take care. Let's dive into the latest controversy surrounding Kourtney Kardashian. She's facing backlash over her vitamin and supplement line, Lem, which she launched in 2022. Lem's gummy supplements are marketed as vegan, gluten-free, non-GMO, and free of artificial sweeteners, synthetic colors, sugar alcohols, corn syrup, glucose syrup, gelatin, and palm oil. However, a TikTok user recently called out the brand after conducting some research, revealing that the gummies might just be glorified candy with minimal health benefits. The comments section exploded, criticizing Lemmy for offering products that allegedly have little to no effect. The brand offers a wide range of products, including sleep gummies, fat burners, probiotics for feminine health, debloaters, hair, skin, and nail gummies, energy boosters, focus enhancers, prenatal vitamins, and glucose and craving support capsules. Prices range from $25 to $40. Despite the variety, Courtney has faced backlash before. For example, her product Lemupur, designed for feminine hygiene, received criticism from gynecologists who advised against it. They argue that promoting such products perpetuates toxic messages about personal hygiene and can make people feel insecure. They suggested that if someone has concerns, they should consult a doctor, not rely on a celebrity's advice. Even with the backlash, Lem Per remains available on the website. Now the brand is under fire again regarding the effectiveness of its products, despite their website promising real results. On the marketing front, Lem has been highly effective. The brand's aesthetic and strategic advertisements on platforms like TikTok and Instagram target a young audience, eager to try Courtney's offerings. Lemmy products are available in major retailers such as Ulta, Amazon, Target, and Revolve. Their vibrant and fun campaigns have successfully captured the attention of potential consumers, earning praise for their marketing efforts. Lemmy the brand by Kourtney Kardashian do the best emails that I have seen in years. The flow, the aesthetics, it's just, it's perfection. So whoever's behind all of this is stunning. I love talking about marketing done right and Lemmy by Kourtney Kardashian really is done right. When you go to the site, first there's an email pop up to get your information. And then the branding on the website is just 
chef's kiss. It's all ADA compliant. It's simple, but it's fun. And it's a pop of color that grabs attention. The hierarchy of information on the website is great. It quickly goes into the products. First of all, we have to start with this insane custom packaging. The rim, the little divots in the rim that have to be custom made for Lemmy. And then the top looking like the vitamin. The way that's going to stand out on a shelf and differentiate itself from the competitors is insane. But definitely my favorite part is the name. The way that the Lemmy Chill, the Lemmy Focus, the way that is used into every single product is really genius. Like when you go to their website, it's like, let me get real results. And they use it in every single aspect of their brand. They launch a new product, Lemmy Glow. Let me also received a lot of praise for simplifying the purpose of each vitamin or supplement. Instead of listing ingredients like melatonin, they label the product as Lem Sleep, highlighting its intended function. This straightforward marketing approach effectively captures the attention of shoppers both in stores and online. Okay, let me tell you why I'm obsessed with the product packaging for Kourtney Kardashian's brand, Lemmy. So I work in the CPG space in brand and strategy, so I pay really close attention to brands, product, and packaging. So in marketing, there's this concept of jobs to be done, which essentially means to understand customer motivations, you need to understand what job they'd be hiring your brand to do for them. So for example, if you go to the store and you buy this Nature's Made melatonin, you're not hiring Nature's Made to give you melatonin. You're hiring them to help you sleep. So in 2014, when Ollie Vitamins was founded, they really disrupted the vitamin and supplement category because they, instead of marketing it as the functional ingredient, they marketed it as the job that you were hiring them to do. So instead of melatonin, it was sleep. It went on to be acquired by Unilever for what I assume is probably a lot of money. But the lesson here is what Lemmy is doing is essentially taking a winning playbook written by Ali and just modernizing it for a new audience. They're clearly communicating the occasion or job on the front of the package. They're using language that resonates with the female audience like Lemmy Purr. And these bottles are so gorgeous, it actually looks like something you'd want to put on your countertop. And I must say, the packaging for this brand is very aesthetic. It looks nice and gives off an expensive vibe. However, it seems like you're really paying for the bottle and the gummy design rather than the actual product inside. The criticism started when the TikTok account Be Better Company posted a video exposing Lem. This creator, known for examining influencers and their careers, initially intended to praise the brand's marketing. But his opinion shifted after delving into the product ingredients, prompting him to warn others about what he had discovered. I have a master's degree in botanical medicine, and today I'm going to use it to expose why this brand by Kourtney Kardashian is one of the biggest scams I have seen in the supplement industry in a very, very long time. I was so excited to talk about this brand and to finally talk about something positive on my page. Imagine my shock and my disappointment when I actually read the ingredients and did a deep dive on some of these more specific. So initially I went to try the matcha because I love matcha and this was my first red flag. For those of you that can't see, it's essentially the same size as a Skittle. So for me, this was a red flag because I know as somebody that literally has done manufacturing for these types of supplements before, there's only so much room where you can fit in these medicinal ingredients into this tiny little gummy because the vast majority of these gummies need to be other things. They need to be natural flavors, sometimes gelatin, and sugar and all these different things, which is typically why high-end, high-quality supplements are in capsules and not made into gummies because you have to compromise essentially the efficacious dosing that you need to get the results that you want. So then I decided to read a little bit more into it and I was extremely, honestly shocked to see that Kourtney Kardashian is engaging in something called proprietary blends. So for those of you that don't know, this is very important, so stick with me. Proprietary blends are essentially when supplement companies will tell you there's 100 milligrams of these three ingredients in our product, but they don't tell you the breakdown of how much of each ingredient is going into it. So this to me is extremely unethical. It's very dishonest. I will never consume a supplement that has proprietary blends because as a consumer, it's relevant to me. If you are advertising a product that's going to be helping my health, I deserve to know the actual breakdown. So just to give you like an example, it would be like if I was selling you a bag and I said, hi, I'm gonna sell you a bag. It has gold in it, it has diamonds, and it has rat poop, and it's 10 pounds, so it's gonna be great. But I'm not gonna tell you how much gold, how much diamonds, and how much rat poop. All you know is that it's 10 pounds of something in here. Would you buy that bag for me? Or would you be skeptical that me trying to make money is secretly putting 99%? Goes on to discuss how proprietary blends are something no supplement company should be using, suggesting that this practice indicates corner cutting. 
If you visit the LEM website and examine the ingredients label for their sleep gummy, you'll see it lists a 25 mg proprietary herbal blend. The problem he highlights is that you don't know the exact amounts of chamomile, elderberry, or lavender in these gummies. This issue was just the beginning of his concerns with the product. The next problem, and I have let me chill here. We have lemon balm, passion flower, and goji berry. So in total, there's 15 milligrams. For those of you that don't know, 15 milligrams is an absolutely negligent amount of botanicals that will have absolutely no effect on you whatsoever. It's BS. I'm sorry, I'm getting mad because this is really one of my biggest passions. So that's extremely frustrating to me. And just to illustrate this even further, because I'm a little bit petty today, I wasn't able to get my hands on Lemmy Sleep because it was sold out. It's the same thing. It's a proprietary blend, so I can't tell you how much of each ingredient there is, but I can make an educated assumption that it's probably evenly distributed. So let's just assume that in Lemmy Sleep, it's five milligrams of chamomile. Would you like to see what five milligrams of chamomile is? There you go. I don't know if you can really even see it. I don't even know if this is like illustrating how small this is. Like compare it to a Skittle. That's what you're getting. That is what you're paying $50 for. It's absurd, absurd. So not only are you lying about the ingredients, but you're advertising something that isn't actually going to have an effective. Also wanted to address the place bill effect, noting that many people claim these products have worked for them. I've seen numerous comments from users who say they can't live without LEM or have had very positive experiences. And these were on random unpaid TikToks. Clearly, he's noticed this trend too and wanted to explain why this might be happening. People are going to say, let me sleep, work for me, it helped me sleep. That's because it has a crap ton of melatonin in it, first of all. There's two reasons why that's happening. The first would be the placebo effect, because let's be honest, it isn't a beautiful package and it's a nice experience, so that's going to enhance the placebo effect. And so is other people's explanations. If you saw a review of it where someone's like, it knocked me out, psychologically, that's sort of suggested to your subconscious mind that that's going to be the effect you're going to experience. And the next reason is that it's encapsulated in sugar. Sugar glucose does have an ability to drive active ingredients. In the end, he also points out that the brand doesn't align with Courtney at all. On their reality show, her persona revolves around avoiding sugar, emphasizing sugar-free and healthy choices, and not allowing her kids to have any candy or sugar. Yet her products contain sugar, making it hard to believe she would actually use them herself. Consuming more than one gummy would result in a significant sugar intake, contradicting her stated values. The whole personal brand of Kourtney Kardashian being sugar-free, sugar-free, gluten-free, Wi-Fi free. And then for you to have such a high sugar product was shocking to me. Before I bought these, I had assumed it was gonna be made out of stevia or something else, or, or really anything other than cane sugar, it's cane sugar. So the reason that I really don't believe that Kourtney Kardashian even consumes these products is that if it was true and every morning she woke up and she took the serving size, which is two gummies out of all 10 of these products that she sells, that would be like 30 grams of sugar right in the morning. I mean, after hearing all this, can anyone really be surprised? Honestly, I'm more shocked that the brand has been selling out, is in so many stores and people are claiming it works for them. Clearly their marketing has been spot on doing exactly what it's meant to do. But for the price of these gummies and the reports that they're hardly doing anything, it sounds more like what he's described in the comments as premium Welch's gummies. But I want to know what you guys think about this whole situation. Have you tried Lem because of all the hype and fancy advertisements? What do you think about what's been exposed about Lemmy? Let me know all your thoughts in the comments. I love you guys so much and I'll talk to you in the next video. Let's dive into the latest controversy surrounding Kourtney Kardashian. She's facing backlash over her vitamin and supplement line, Lem, which she launched in 2022. Lem's gummy supplements are marketed as vegan, gluten-free, non-GMO, and free of artificial sweeteners, synthetic colors, sugar alcohols, corn syrup, glucose syrup, gelatin, and palm oil. However, a TikTok user recently called out the brand after conducting some research, revealing that the gummies might just be glorified candy with minimal health benefits. The comments section exploded, criticizing Lemmy for offering products that allegedly have little to no effect. The brand offers a wide range of products, including sleep gummies, fat burners, probiotics for feminine health, de bloaters, hair, skin, and nail gummies, 
energy boosters, focus enhancers, prenatal vitamins, and glucose and craving support capsules. Prices range from $25 to $40. Despite the variety, Courtney has faced backlash before. For example, her product Lemupur, designed for feminine hygiene, received criticism from gynecologists who advised against it. They argue that promoting such products perpetuates toxic messages about personal hygiene and can make people feel insecure. They suggested that if someone has concerns, they should consult a doctor, not rely on a celebrity's advice. Even with the backlash, Lemper remains available on the website. Now the brand is under fire again regarding the effectiveness of its products, despite their website promising real results. On the marketing front, Lem has been highly effective. The brand's aesthetic and strategic advertisements on platforms like TikTok and Instagram target a young audience, eager to try Courtney's offerings. Lemmy products are available in major retailers such as Ulta, Amazon, Target, and Revolve. Their vibrant and fun campaigns have successfully captured the attention of potential consumers, earning praise for their marketing efforts. Lemmy the brand by Kourtney Kardashian do the best emails that I have seen in years. The flow, the aesthetics, it's just, it's perfection. So whoever's behind all of this is stunning. I love talking about marketing done right and Lemmy by Kourtney Kardashian really is done right. When you go to the site, first there's an email pop-up to get your information. And then the branding on the website is just, chef's kiss it's all ada compliant it's simple but it's fun and it's a pop of color that grabs attention the hierarchy of information on the website is great it quickly goes into the products first of all we have to start with this insane custom packaging the rim the little divots in the rim that have to be custom made for lemmy and then the top looking like the vitamin the way that's going to stand out on a shelf and differentiate itself from the competitors is insane but definitely my favorite part is the name the way that the lemmy chill the Lemmy Focus, the way that is used into every single product is really genius. Like when you go to their website, it's like, let me get real results. And they use it in every single aspect of their brand. They launch a new product, Lemmy Glow, Lemmy Burn. In the end, he also points out that the brand doesn't align with Courtney at all. On their reality show, her persona revolves around avoiding sugar, emphasizing sugar-free and healthy choices, and not allowing her kids to have any candy or sugar. Yet her products contain sugar, making it hard to believe she would actually use them herself. Consuming more than one gummy would result in a significant sugar intake, contradicting her stated values. And after hearing all this, can anyone really be surprised? Honestly, I'm more shocked that the brand has been selling out, is in so many stores, and people are claiming it works for them. Clearly their marketing has been spot on doing exactly what it's meant to do. But for the price of these gummies and the reports that they're hardly doing anything, it sounds more like what he's described in the comments as premium Welch's gummies. But I want to know what you guys think about this whole situation. Have you tried Lem because of all the hype and fancy advertisements? What do you think about what's been exposed about Lemmy? Let me know all your thoughts in the comments. I love you guys so much and I'll talk to you in the next video.